Hello everyone, this is Ben, and welcome to Shower Thoughts. As is tradition when a new set comes out, I'll be giving you my top 5 budget commanders from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, the Commander Pre-Cons, the Commander cards found in only set boosters, and the Jurassic Park Universe's Beyond cards. If you disagree with my list, let me know in the comments section below, and if you can give this video a like, it really helps out the channel. And if you want to take your support even further, you can sign up to be a channel member, you can find that linked in the video description. Okay, with all the shilling out of the way, let's get into it. Before we get into the top 5 proper, I want to go over some honorable mentions. First up is Amelia Benavides Aguirre. I already have an Orzov commander on my list, and I didn't want to include a second one. However, Amelia is a great life gain commander, and you can companion them with Lures of the Dream Den, which is what I would do personally. Next up is Hawkball of the Surging Soul. This is the face commander for the Merfolk Precon, and I do love it. It's a great go wide Merfolk commander, but there wasn't much else to say about them. If you love Merfolk, pick up this Precon. And then finally, we have Inador Raptor, the perfect hybrid. This is one of the more unique Jun commanders I've seen, and I love it for Group Slug. Number 5 on my list is Francisco Falmarauder. This pirate bird has the benefit of having Partner, giving you a massive variety of decks to build with him. I'm personally looking forward to building Esper Birds with Ishai Ojotai Dragon Speaker as the partner, or you can stick to two colors and just add Essior Wardwing Familiar. You can also build Demir Pirates with Malcolm Kenai Navigator, or Rakdos with Breach's Brazen Plunderer. Aside from the meme factor of this commander, his ability is pretty powerful, especially if you can find a way to ping yourself with a pirate. Notice how it says player, not opponent. So if you can find a way to ping multiple times a turn, you can explore up to 16 times a turn cycle. I'm personally leaning towards a pinger build with this commander since it's an easy way to deal damage, and because this commander is partner, the budget cards I'm going to suggest aren't going to be mono black. Some partners you should try with this commander, as I said, were Essior Wardwing Familiar, Kelleth Sunmane Familiar, Malcolm Kenai Navigator, Breach's Brazen Plunderer, and Ghost of Ramirez de Petro. Some key budget cards to include would be Conspiracy, Viridian Longbow, Sting the Glinting Dagger, Quicksilver Dagger, and Archery Training. Number 4 on my list is another pre-con commander in Carmen Cruel Skymarcher. While this card does make for a powerful vampire and sacrifice commander, I'm much more interested in building them as a landfall commander. Their first ability reminds me of the Gitrog monster's ability since we get benefit from sacking lands. While fetch lands like Marsh Flats and Arid Mesa are powerful, they aren't needed in this deck. That being said, they are pretty inexpensive right now, so I would probably pick up any that are under $15. Anyways, let's get back on track here. You can play the tapped fetches such as Grasslands, Floodplain, and Bad River, but I think you'll do just fine with cards like Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, and Esper Panorama. Despite not having access to green, Orzhov still has access to 32 landfall cards that are $3 or less, which is more than enough to build a deck. If landfall isn't your thing, you could try a life gain deck that uses the Streets of New Capenna lands to gain additional life. Key budget cards to include would be Feldar Retreat, Amiria Shepherd, Retreat to Hagra, Savine's Reclamation, and Trove Warden. Coming in at number 3 is the Myco Tyrant. While this commander might remind you of Slimefoot the Stowaway, I think in practice they're going to play quite a bit differently. Yes, both do care about Sapperlings, their 3 mana and Inglegari colors, but that is where the similarities stop for me. Slimefoot wants you to sacrifice Sapperlings to drain out the tables the win condition. The Myco Tyrant has a different goal in mind, beating face. Yes, you should add Aristocrat's payoff, such as Blood Artist and Zulaport Cutthroat. However, you can just turn the Myco Tyrant sideways, or you could take a page out of Yargle and Multani's playbook and play Essence Harvest or Gerard Golgari Lichlord to drain out the table. One final thing to keep in mind is that Descended only triggers when a permanent cards are put into the graveyard. This means tokens dying will not increase this count because they're not actual cards. Key budget cards to include would be Reassembling Skeleton, Murkwood Bats, Brood Rage My Kid. Lich Knight's Conquest, and Moldervine Reclamation. Coming in at number 2 is Ogre Tack, Deepest Foundation. Now I know you might be thinking, how is this a budget commander? When I look at budget commanders, I don't just look at the price of the commander, but also the archetype or how much it costs to build the deck around the commander. And in this case, you can build a really powerful deck for really inexpensive with this commander. Yes, you could include powerful cards like Adeline Resplendent Cathar, Mondrak Glory Dominus, and Anointed Procession, but you really don't need those cards in this deck. This commander makes three times the number of creature tokens, so Elf's Best Son's Champion will make 9-1-1 White Soldiers, and Raise the Alarm will make 6-1-1s for 2 mana. All of the tokens synergize great with Soul Warden, 
Sutra Priest, and Daxos Blessed by the Sun to provide a ton of life gain. Some key budget cards to include would be Mere Battlesphere, Rootborn Defenses, Visions of Glory, Spectral Procession, and Horn of Gondor. And coming in at number one is Tetsun Gnome Champion. Aside from being a legendary gnome, which is just awesome, they provide us with a very unique effect. They care about double-faced artifacts, which is a refreshing change of pace for artifact commanders. Now, at the time of writing, there are 47 flip artifacts in Jeskai Colors, most of which are from Lost Caverns of Ixalan and the previous Ixalan set. But fear not, as we can easily turn cards into artifacts. We have Liquid Metal Torque and Liquid Metal Coating, so we can easily flip cards like Storm the Vault. Remember that this doesn't exile cards when they transform, so if you transform a Jinka Taxis, the first chapter of its saga won't trigger until your next turn. Also, token copies of transforming cards do have backsides, but clones don't. See Rule 711.5. I'll have it linked in the video description below. So for example, if you use Sahili's Artistry to make an artifact token copy of a flip creature, Tetson can flip that creature, but if you have a clone enters a copy of a flip creature, can't flip because there's no backside on clone. Sorry for that brief tangent, just wanted to be very clear on the rules because of how weird this card is. As for building the commander, the best budget path is going to be artifacts with a token subtheme. Because of the rules I just went over, cards like Osgear the Reconstructor and Mechanized Production are great at giving us even more artifacts to flip. Key budget cards to include would be Chrome Host Seed Shark, Emery Lurker of the Lock, Urza Prince of Krog, Golden Guardian, and Thousand Moon Smithy. And that wraps up my top 5 budget commanders from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Let me know your thoughts on the list in the comment section below and what commanders you're looking forward to building. Don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, and subscribe if you're not. Alrighty, see ya!